Let's start with discussing what a prompt is. A prompt is a set of textual instructions given to a generative model to produce an output in ChatGPT. Essentially, anything written in the prompt area can be considered a prompt. Prompts can be simple, like is it difficult to start a burger place, or how to test ports on a server or Linux, or they can be complex and lengthy, like when you need to do something in HTML and you provide the entire copy of the HTML file along with your question. To understand how ChatGPT works, we need to differentiate between Google and ChatGPT or OpenAI, the company that created ChatGPT. Google is a search engine that retrieves results based on keywords and sorts them by some algorithm. It's not a generative model and doesn't have the ability to generate new text or be creative. On the other hand, ChatGPT is a natural language processing artificial intelligence that provides human-like output using human-like input. It can generate creative ideas or original content, unlike Google. However, it currently has no access to the internet and uses only the data on which it has been trained the common crawl. This data contains the entire internet as of 2021, so anything after that period is not in the dataset. This results in different types of questions that we can ask Google and ChatGPT. For example, you can ask Google for the temperature outside and expect reliable results, but you cannot ask ChatGPT such questions because it doesn't have access to present data. However, you can ask ChatGPT more complex questions using prompts like explain quantum physics to me like I'm a five-year-old and it can get, generate a human-like response. ChatGPT has some strengths such as content generation, chatting, idea generation, coding, rewriting, etc. For instance, I asked ChatGPT to write an email for me when I got overcharged for a flight and it wrote a really nice email. I ended up sending that email and got a refund. However, it also has some weaknesses. It cannot make a decision, cannot give you updated information and cannot help with professional advice in some areas such as medical and law. If you ask for a decision, it will provide you with a list of things to consider but won't make the decision for you. For example, if you ask it whether you should break up with your girlfriend, it will give you some parameters to consider, but it won't decide for you. Also, in this prompt, I'm asking ChatGPT whether to choose one or the other hotel, and it also gives me another list of things to consider. ChatGPT has some limitations. When the server is overloaded, the response time can be slow. If you ask too many questions and are on a free plan, you might get kicked out for an hour. Additionally, it doesn't comply with inappropriate or offensive requests and it won't provide illegal, harmful or exploitative material. For example, if you ask how to steal your neighbor's identity without them knowing, ChatGPT won't provide any help because it's illegal. This is also a good thing because ChatGPT is very smart and I believe it actually can teach you how to do it. These limitations protect the user from asking ChatGPT how to commit crimes or other unethical activities. One final thing to discuss in this lecture is ChatGPT hallucinations. The way that ChatGPT is designed is to always provide an output. However, sometimes it might not understand the question due to a bad prompt or have no answer. Even in those situations, ChatGPT might provide a response that sounds very confident, so you might end up taking an incorrect output that sounds very true. Due to our biases, we might believe the incorrect output generated by ChatGPT, so we need to be very careful when using it. This is the end of this lecture, and I will see you in the next lecture where we will be discussing job opportunities for prompt engineering.